This afternoon, we're going to read John chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. So if you have your Bibles with you, please turn to John chapter 3. And we're going to be reading from verses 1 through 10. If you don't have a Bible, you can always look up at the screen. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 1, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? You may be seated, and Pastor Chan will come and deliver the message. I want to bring a message this morning, and the message is entitled, born of God. Please stand and turn with me in your Bibles to John chapter 1 beginning with verse 10. John chapter 1 verse 10 and please follow me as I read from the Bible. He, Jesus, was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He, Jesus, came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, Jesus, to them gave he power, gave he authority to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Please keep those verses open in your Bible, but you may be seated. Please keep that uh, screenshot open and up on the screen. In verses 10 and 11, I want you to take notice of the underlined words, because this will help us to understand the points of my message tonight drawn from this passage of Scripture. In verse 10 and 11, knew him not, received him not. In verse, tw in verse 12, we read the opposite sense in the words, received him and believed on. And then in verse, 14, verse 13, we read, were born of God. Just keep that open. Keep that up for a minute. Now these words, these underlined words, are key to our understanding of my message this morning. Point one will focus on knew him not, which speaks of lack of an understanding. Knew him not, not understanding. Received him not speaks of an intentional lack of a desire of knowing. Point two will focus on received him and believed on which speaks of an establishment of a relationship. And then point three, we'll focus on the words, we're born of God, 
which speaks of not just any relationship, but the most intimate of relationships of one who is a child of God. And now comes my text from these verses this morning. Just look on the screen. The world knew him not. His own received him not. But as many as receive him to, get to them, to those who received him, to them gave he power, the authority. Jesus gave the authority to, be, to, to, to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born. Three consecutive reasons how you were not born of God, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Point one. First, most in the world do not know Christ because they refuse to receive him. It's not an innocent reason why people in the world do not know Jesus Christ. They refuse him. They refuse to enter into a relationship with him. There are no victims in this world. And the reason why you don't know Jesus Christ is because you don't want to know him. You do not receive him. The world knew him not. His own received him not. As we saw last time, the creator of the world, Jesus Christ himself, created the world, and yet the people in the world refused to acknowledge him, receive him as creator. Think about that. Your parents did not create you, but God used them to bring you into this world. Mm. It's just as if a child of their parents refuses to acknowledge their mother and father. And yet, if you do not know God through the Lord Jesus Christ, you are as guilty and rebellious as that. There are no victims who are not the children of God. You are not the child of God because you don't want to be the child of God. You do not want to receive Jesus Christ. That was true when Jesus was here on earth in his earthly ministry. The world received him not. The world did not understand him and his own people did not receive him. And so it is true today. Same thing. Sinful man has not changed. And God, through the Lord Jesus Christ, hasn't changed. He is still offering his son to you. But just like the people in Jesus' day that did not want to receive him, to, that did not want to believe on his name, the same is true of you who do not know God. You're not guiltless. You're not a victim. You are who you are based upon your refusal of receiving Jesus. That ignorance of not knowing Christ is wholly intentional. It's a decided refusal. It's because sinners in the world want to remain in their sin. Light has come into the world, but men, but sinners, love darkness rather than light because what they did, their works were evil. They are comfortable in your own element. And the Bible sees that as a pig in the mud. To God, the life that you live outside of God is one of sin and of filth and is one of piggishness, of wanting to remain in the filth and the darkness of sin. There are no guiltless people who are not the sons of God. You prefer darkness rather than light and shown by the evil that you do. You see, truly knowing Christ. By, being, by becoming a son of God, a daughter of God, produces a radical change in the soul, a transformation that cannot be gotten by your own will, by your own works. It must be wrought, it must be brought about by God changing the heart, changing the affections, so that you who once loved darkness and sin now love light and God and gospel and lost sinners 
with whom we must spread the gospel. A radical change. And so, think about your life. When did you turn from darkness of sin to the light and life of Christ? When did your goals, ambition, life change from the selfishness of what you want to doing the Father's will and to following Christ? If, you, if that is not a memorable experience in your life, then you are not a son or daughter of God. Only a few in this world truly experience this radical transformation. I think that's evident. Apply the Bible to your own life. And so the, jo the Apostle John moves from speaking about the world in general to his own people in particular. And so that's what I'm doing to you and for you this morning. You see, the truths of the Bible are not just facts to acknowledge but they are the words of God to you. It's to speak to you. God wants to speak to you through his word and to see whether you measure up or not. Ask yourself repeatedly this morning, am I a child of God? Do I take on the resemblance of my heavenly father? Do I have the personality of someone who is sourced from God? The prophet Isaiah said very sadly regarding his own people receiving his own son. The prophet Isaiah said, The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. In other words, they know their parents. Animals do. But Israel doth not know. What about you? Do you know your heavenly father? Do you want to please your heavenly father? Are you holy in life or, uh, or are you like the world of darkness and sin? Do you know Jesus Christ who made you? And Jesus said this lack of knowing, this lack of knowledge of a relationship has awful consequences. It's not just, okay, I don't have a relationship with Jesus, but that's full of meaning because if you don't know Jesus, if you are not a child of God, then when your body dies, that houses, it's the home of your eternal soul, then you will not be with God in heaven. And there's only one alternate destination for those who are not ch the child of God, is they will go to where the devil and his angels are, or will be, excuse me, will be, and that is hell and the lake of fire. There are only two places. If you're comfortable with the idea that you're not a child of God, you will not remain comfortable. You can stick your head in the sand and not care whether you're a son of God, a daughter of God, but you will wake up to the stark realization that because you're not a child of God, will have eternal consequences and so throughout the Bible it says, prepare to meet God. Become a child of God now is the only way to ensure that you will be a child of God for eternity in heaven. So Jesus directs lost sinners who do not know God, who are not a child of God. Jesus directs lost sinners to enter in, in Matthew 17, 13, and 14. He tells you, he directs you, don't stay like you are. He says, enter in at the straight gate, the narrow gate, which is Jesus himself. Enter into me, the narrow gate, because wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. That's eternal destruction in hell and the lake of fire. Jesus does not want you to go there. You're questioning in your mind, am I a child of God? Which means you're not. And so you're entering through the wide gate and the broad way that leads to destruction. And Jesus is warning you this morning, enter into me. Don't continue through the wide gate and the broad way which leads to hell and the lake of fire and eternal punishment for sin. Enter into me because I died for you on the cross to pay for your sins. 
I shed my blood to wash you clean. I rose from the dead so you can have eternal life. Enter into me, Jesus says. And he says, continuing, and many there be which go in thereat. Most people go through the wide gate and the broad way that leads to hell and the lake of fire. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. And few there be that find it. Born of God. That sounds great. But few people are born of God. And don't assume that you are born of God. Because Jesus says very few are born of God. So think and engage your mind. Because God is trying to speak to you through the message this morning. Second, a few in the world, a few in the world do receive Christ believe on his name, and are given the authority to become the sons of God. The world knew him not. His own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave the authority to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Believing on his name quali it qualifies, clarifies what it is to receive him. Let's look at that verse more closely. To receive, think about it, to receive underscores the passive aspect. To receive, it's passive. The passive aspect of receiving Christ. But this receiving also involves an active component of believing on Christ's name. It is both receiving as well as actively believing. These are not contradictory because it is God who's a, who is the cause of both. God gives us Christ to receive. God gives us Christ to receive. And God gives us faith to believe. It is God who's the cause of our gift of Christ. And God, by giving us faith, enables us to use the faith that God has given us then to believe. The object of our receiving and our believing is Jesus. We must receive Jesus and we must believe on his name. And so what does it mean to believe on his name? Last time I told you, to believe in one's name, in a person's name, is to believe in the entirety of the person. Jesus Christ. Jesus is his name. Jesus means God saved. And Christ means his kingship, his lordship, his messiahship. And so to receive Christ, to believe on his name, is to believe in the totality of Jesus. That Jesus saves, he's the savior. And that believe on his name is to believe that he is king and lord, and you are to be subject to him by obeying and following him. So to receive Christ is to believe on the totality of Jesus, his saviorship and his lordship. And if you don't receive him in these two capacities, if you just want to receive forgiveness of sins, but you haven't followed Jesus and obeyed him in your life, then you haven't received him. You received someone, but it wasn't Jesus. Because his name means savior, Jesus, God saves, and Christ, Christos, Mashiach, that he is king, lord, and Messiah with whom to follow. That's very important. And so to believe on Christ's name, it's to believe in the totality of Jesus. And what happens when you receive Jesus and believe on his name? The Bible says you become a son and daughter of God. You receive a new life through Christ within you. It's something that God does. We are born of God. I told you both the passive and the active. The passive of receiving and the active of believing are from God. And so that's why the Bible says we are born of God. Now think about your physical birth. Did you have anything to do with your physical birth? God used your parents to come together to have you. You did not do anything to be born. You didn't plan it. You didn't choose your parents. 
You were just born. You had nothing to do with that. And in the same way, salvation is of God, of the Lord. And so when God gives someone who senses that they're in darkness of sin, and they sense that they need the light of Christ, that they're without God, then God begins working in the heart to show you your sin. God does that. God gives you a sense that you need Jesus so you receive him. And God gives you faith so that you can actively believe on him. That whole regeneration, that whole birth, spiritual birth, is from God. It's not from you. But that doesn't mean that you're a wood or a stone. And that's where the comparison with, with a physical birth kind of breaks down. Because although we don't have anything to do with our physical birth, that's similar to the spiritual birth. Yet, when God works in you to, do these cha- to make these changes of the mind and of the heart, you must respond. If you harden your heart, if you decide, I want to stay in my sin, I want to stay in the darkness of my sin, then you won't be born of God. Third and last, those who receive Christ and believe on his name become the sons of God by being born of God. The world knew him not. His own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he authority, power, to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born. How were they born? Not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So the apostle John makes it clear How one is born of God. I already told you it's all of God. But we are slow to think. And we think we know how to be born of God. How to become a Christian. So the Apostle John makes it clear. We are not born by blood. What does that mean? It means we are not born through our family. We are not born through our parents. Your parents may be Christians. Maybe you have a long history of Christianity in your family. We go to Central Avenue in Glendale, and I speak to many people of different races. But some people that are born with a Catholic heritage or with a Baptist heritage or Armenian, they often tell me when I ask them the question, do you know Jesus? They say, oh, sure, I know Jesus. My grandmother told me about him. My mother raised me in the Catholic church. My father took me to a Baptist church. But the Apostle John said, they are born not of blood. You do not become a son or daughter of God because your family are Christians, because you are raised in a religion or an ethnic group. You are not, you do not become a Christian because others around you are Christian. That's the first not. Not of the flesh means not of anything that you do. Your flesh, your body can do things. You came to church here today. Don't take any stock in that. You're not, you do not become a Christian by coming to church. It's good that you come to church, but that doesn't make you a Christian. It's not by raising your hand or saying a prayer. Those are things that you can do. But becoming a Baptist for many years... For knowing the vocabulary of being a Baptist, that doesn't save you. Not by blood, not by the works of the flesh, nor by the will of man. You cannot become a Christian because you believe in Jesus. A mental idea. I believe in the gospel. I believe that he died for my sins. I believe that he was buried. I believe that he rose again the third day. That doesn't make a Christian. That's the will of man, the will of a person. You can decide many things in life, but you cannot decide to become a son or daughter of God. I want you to think about that. Because many people here are making the mistake that the Apostle John says, you cannot become a Christian by your family, by your religion, by anything you do, by being a good person by being respectful to others or by deciding in your mind to become a Christian because you believe in some Bible truths. No, 
A person becomes the son or daughter of God because God birthed them through the Lord Jesus Christ. I see this problem all around me. What about you? Paul wrote, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You cannot enter the kingdom of God by your physical self. God has to do it. The apostle Paul wrote, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy by God, saved us by the washing of regeneration. And then John said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. You must be born again. Jesus, who died on the cross and shed his blood and rose from the dead, and talked to Nicodemus about the new birth, he wanted to make sure that Nicodemus and you, through speaking to Nicodemus, he wanted to make sure that you're born again. He said, you must be born again. You must be born of God. He said, marvel not that I said unto you, don't be surprised, I said unto you, you must be born again. And then he said, That unless you, unless you are born again, you will never see the kingdom of God. Jesus said time and time again, you must be born again. Why does Jesus, why is he so insistent on telling you you must be born again? Because Jesus knows that you are going through the wide gate and the broad way that leads to destruction. Jesus talked about hell more than anyone else. You see, it's either hell or to be born again. So Jesus warns of hell, and then he exhorts you, encourages you to be born again. He's saying the same thing. Positively, be born again. Negatively, don't go to hell. Jesus died to pay for your sins so that you could become a child of God, so you can know God, and so that you can live for eternity with God in heaven. So you won't have to experience the alternative of being in hell forever and ever. And what about being a child of God? I told you how one is to become a child of God. I want you to think about that. Some here are not convinced. Oh, I think maybe I am a son of God. Well, why don't you think? A child of God, like any other child, would say to their parents, Mama and Papa, right? Isn't it normal, their first words, to say Mama of that sort? And so Paul wrote in Galatians 4, 6, And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. What does it mean? If you're a child of God, do you frequently turn in your heart to God in an adoring manner and say, I love you, God. I love what you have done for me. You are my heavenly Father, and I love you, and I want to please you. Is that the language of your heart? The way that a child loves their parents is the way that a child of God loves their heavenly Father. And then a child will often resemble their parents. Isn't that true? And so if you're a child of God, you should resemble your heavenly Father. And so Jesus said to his disciples, Be therefore perfect, complete, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Do you have a heavenly personality? Do you have a heavenly attitude? When you're with the world, those who are not Christians, do they sense that you are different from them? You are godly. You are Christ-like. If you're a real child of God, a son of God, or a daughter of God, you would act differently, and people will feel uncomfortable in their sin to be with you. Do you act like a child of God? And so the Apostle John wrote, because brothers love sisters and brothers within the family, it's natural. And so too with the child of God. The Apostle John wrote in 1 John 5.1, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth 
Him, God, loveth Him that is begotten of Him, the children of God. You see, if you're a child of God, your closest love is not even your own family, is not even your own parents. If you're a true child of God, then you will love the brothers and sisters in the local church because your relationship with them is more meaningful because it's eternal, it's everlasting. And so how can you make a check in your own heart if you're a child of God is if you love the brothers and sisters in the local church even more than your natural family. Absolutely. Jesus displayed his great love to give you the new birth. He said, except a man be born again, except a person is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How do you become a child of God? I said, it's of God. Yes, it is of God. But I also said that you have to respond to when God shows you something. And so Paul, writing to the Galatians, in Galatians 3.26, said this very simply, for you are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. We've been talking about becoming a son or daughter of God. I want you to ask yourself, have you ever asked yourself, I wish I could live my life all over again. I wish all the mistakes of sin that I've done that ruined my life, I wish I could do it all over again. Well, you can't do it all over again in this life, but you can be born again from God, and you can have a new life so that instead of you're, instead of you being a servant of sin, you can be a servant of God. You, you can know God through Jesus Christ. You can know the meaning of life. You can look forward to everlasting life. You can have peace with God. You can have direction. You can have brothers and sisters in the church that you love, that will support you, that will be there for you forever and ever. Turn from your life of sin. Turn from the darkness of your sin and come to the light of and the life of Christ. Be born again and have a new life with God through Jesus Christ. And that's our prayer for you this morning. Let's all stand, please. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the, for the word of God. We thank you so much for Jesus, who made it so plain so many times, Lord, that we need to be forgiven of our sins. We need to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, who paid for all of our sins, who washed it all away in his blood so that we can become a son, a daughter of God. Lord, I pray for the Christians here that, that you would help us to be more thankful to you, to love our brothers and sisters in the faith, in the local church more, and to love you so we would serve you more, to spread the gospel of the kingdom to others. And we pray for the loss that you would speak to them, show them that they are not a child of God because they, lo they love their sin. Help them to turn from their sin, the darkness of their sin. Help them to come to Jesus, to come to the light and life of Jesus and become a child of God this morning. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. And we're gonna